This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. I'll tell you a, a great story because I had been out with them during the summer and it was a mixed tag team match with the Macho King and Queen Sherry against Dusty and Sapphire. In Dusty and Sapphire's corner was Miss Elizabeth. In Savage's corner was Brother Love. Oh, wow. So we did these matches all around the horn, and it was, without a doubt, some of the most fun I have ever had in the business. Because Dusty and I would travel together a lot during that time. I either traveled with with Randy and Liz, or I traveled with Dusty. And, oh, my God, we we just had a blast together, just uh, up and down the roads and, and having a lot of fun. But when we first started this match, we laid out the match. Randy liked to lay things out. We laid out the match. And Dusty dictated a lot of it, if you will. And the match, in short, kind of consisted of myself, Randy, and Sherry running into Dusty's elbow. <laughs> dream, dream didn't move. The elbow just stayed up in position, and our heads found it. I see. And I am having an absolute blast every night. Just working with Dusty, having fun, working with Randy and Sherry and everybody. I mean, we are having a blast. And we're kind of doing the same thing every night, every night, you know, and, and we're doing this for about two, three, four weeks, maybe three weeks. And then we finally get to Hamilton, Ontario, and we got a double shot. So we're doing a show in the afternoon and another uh, show that night in Toronto. Well, Pat Patterson is the agent for both shows, and Pat has not yet seen our match. He says, what have you guys been doing? And he says, well, you know, we'll show you tonight. So we go out or during the day, the first show. So we go out and we have the match and we come back and we're like, what'd you think? And he says, how are you guys getting to Toronto? I said, well, we actually were going to ride with somebody. He says, ride with me. So this is Pat Patterson telling Randy and myself and Liz to ride with him. Right. So we get in the car. He had a, he had a limousine and we get in the car and on the way there, Pat tells us it was one of the worst matches he had ever seen in his wow. life. He says, I hated it. Oh, my God, Randy, you're a WWF champion, and you're out there, and you're bumping all over for him, and you're not getting anything in, and he makes you look like a piece of garbage. And essentially, he's getting Randy fired up. Because he's like telling him, he's abusing you and now you're bumping and you're making he doesn't do anything and you're a champion and everybody, they love you. And brother love, what the hell? He goes, you get in for the match, you get in one time, one time only. You got heat. Why you go in and bump all over for him? We think about it. And Pat's telling us everything that's wrong with the match that we laid out that we loved. Right. And he's making sense. He's making a lot of sense. But to be just real blunt, man, we were fans of Dusty, and we were having a good time right. <laughs> working with the Dream and doing all of his stuff. So he says, let's come up with a different match. So we come up with a completely different match with basically Randy controlling the majority of the match and getting heat on Dusty and Dusty making his comeback and Brother Love gets in at the very end and Dusty gets one shot at Brother Love and that's the finish and, and we're out of there. So we get to Toronto and we have this match. Randy and I have this whole match laid out. I mean, we've got it, got it completely laid out. And... Randy says, he's fired up. I mean, he's, he's just all bowed up. He's ready to go. And he's like, where's Virgil? Where is he? And he hadn't gotten there yet. Let me know as soon as he gets in and we need to talk to him. So Dusty comes in, puts his bag down. And they say, hey, uh, Dusty's in the back dressing room over there. So we go marching in and, and Randy goes over to, to Dusty. Says, 
Green, we need to talk to you for a minute uh, in here. So we walk around the corner going to the shower. That's where you had all your private meetings. <laughs> it's in a shower or a bathroom stall. So <coughs> we we get in and Randy starts off by going, Oh, uh, yeah, uh, we were talking to Pat about the match and um, he didn't like it. And uh, we had... We had some changes and things like that. And uh, we're going to make some changes tonight. So, um, Brother Love, go ahead and tell him what the match is. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. And I, I'm looking at Randy like, why me? And go, yeah, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And so I lay the match out to Dusty. And Dusty has got his back against the wall in the shower and is looking at me with these giant bug eyes. Doesn't say a word throughout the entire spiel. And we're finished. And Randy's like, okay, what do you think? And Dream just looks at it and says, baby, you know, this is kind of like somebody going in and grabbing Babe Ruth and pulling him in the shower and telling him how to Hit the ball, if you will. And there's silence, and Randy says, Well, babe, that's what we're doing tonight. See you in the <laughs> ring. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, I mean, it was just classic dusty, and we went out, you know, and we tore it up. But, uh, yeah, it, brother, yeah. Okay, babe. And from that point on, he was babe to us. And that's amazing. Every night we would go out and go, Hey, babe, uh, this is what we're doing. Baby. So, <laughs> you know, but that was just typical Dusty. A rib. Polka dots weren't a rib. There's no such thing as a rib. But Dusty had to have a good sense of humor and rib somebody. Dusty had, no, Dusty had a great sense of humor. I, I don't know. Well, it was a rib on me, but it was just kind of funny to give you an example of Dusty's kind of sense of humor. We were in Cincinnati and Dream and I were traveling together. And Dusty always liked to stay off the beaten path away from everybody else. And we pull up to a hotel, a brand new Hilton Hotel at the Cincinnati airport. We pull up, Sapphire and Sherry pull up right behind us. Now, we had no idea where we were staying that night. We were going to go in and see if they had rooms. And they pull up and go, oh, oh, hey, are you guys staying here? And Dusty says, yeah, baby, we're staying here, but they sold out for the night. Y'all need to go there. The nice little Fairfield Inn over there, or Hampton Inn down the street. Real nice for y'all. I, I, I called in. They got reservations for y'all over there when I thought they didn't have no more rooms over here. And would send the girls on the way so that nobody would stay with us. We go in, all right, and Dream is telling me, about, Pong it in. Pong it in. let me handle this because I stay here all the time. They know me here. I get us a good rate. We walk in, and now this place is brand spanking new. He stays here all the time. He stays there all the time. I get a good rate. Let me handle everything. And we walk in, and the girl says, oh, hey, welcome. We're so happy to have you. This is our first weekend open. And (laughs) I'm looking at Dream like, (laughs) stay here all the time, right? I mean, they just built this place. It just opened it a week ago. So we go, we go in, and, and Dream and I had made plans to go to a movie that afternoon before the show. So we, we go in, and we go to our separate rooms, and I throw my bags in my room, and I go to Dusty's room, and I knock on the door and walk in, and he's there. No sans pants. pants. No pants. <laughs> <laughs> he just has his T-shirt on, sitting on the bed, and he turns the TV on. And on the TV, it says, the Cincinnati Airport Hilton welcomes Dusty Rhodes wow. on the on the TV screen, and he looks. You know, I'm looking at that, and and I'm like, what the hell? He goes, oh man, he goes, they do that all the time. He goes, I tell them, always tell them, don't they don't need to do that to let everybody know I'm here and all that. You know, I I don't like it when they do that. So I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, so I don't even think about it. I'm just thinking it's odd that you turn on the TV and sure. Hilton is welcoming Dusty Rhodes. Now, you got to go back in time to 1989 when technology wasn't as sophisticated uh, sure. as it is now. That's a big deal back then. Yeah. So 
we decide, he decides that uh, we're, he's too tired to go to a movie and he's just going to hang out in the room. So I go back to my room, turn the TV on, and the Cincinnati Airport Hilton welcomes Bruce Pritchard. <laughs> So now I get it, okay? You know, you check in your room, they program your name, they welcome you on the screen. So I call him, go, hey, you asshole. I said, that's something they do for everybody. Goes, no, punk and head, what it was is I saw your faith when you looked at the TV and thought they had only recognized me, and I called down to the front desk and said, hey, can y'all put Bruce Pritchard's name up there on the TV so he don't feel bad? <laughs> I love him. That's the kind of sense of humor he had. <laughs> and that's, you know, the, the the way that he was. And you could call BS on all of it and he would he would look you around the face and go, No, nah, Pong and Hand, I did that for you, baby. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.